All right, so today I got another interesting video for you. Before I get started, I wanna talk about this tweet I posted two days ago talking about I market long chain link, and I did do that. I bought at about 870. I'm still in the trade. As I've said here, I'm targeting $12. Could run up to somewhere around 1250. Um, you know, I put I might put some uh, sell orders there. I uh, haven't yet, but still watching the chart. But anyway, so, uh, I'm going to show you why I made this purchase. Um, you know, I always see patterns throughout the charts and so on. And let's go ahead and take a look. So looking at the chain link chart, uh, first and foremost, you're going to have this downtrend uh, that I think is going to build. Um, you're going to have this resistance level here at around 1240, 1250. Uh, that's my, my target. Ultimately, $12 would just be it. Uh, a sell that I would be satisfied with because it'd be roughly 50% gains in just a, a week, I think. So as I'm showing you here, this horizontal line is the resistance point and this uh, trend downtrend is going to be the resistance point as well. So I think, you know, October 2nd, around 12.50 will probably be right around where you want to be getting out of this thing personally. All right. And, uh, you know, a lot of TA guys will say, uh, trading patterns is very basic and and so on but you know you say what you want but in crypto these patterns happen over and over and over and over and they they usually seem to play out um almost as the other did and you can find them scattered all throughout the charts i don't know if it's algorithmic trading or maybe it's because crypto isn't as manipulated as the wall street you know stock markets which just only go up over time apparently uh but anyway so i recognize this formation here i was thinking oh that looks very similar to something i've seen before and i'm going to show you what that looks like so this chart reminded me exactly of the bitcoin top in uh december 2017 into early 2018 you had the parabolic well, one last parabolic move up we had a fairly uh like a w formation here on the moving averages uh, obviously um, failed to make a new high continued downwards found quick support at about 11.5 and then it dumped so or 12,000 roughly uh, and you can see almost the same thing here in chain link right about a w formation here falls down find support around 12 bucks and then it dumps all right and so i bought down here thinking all right we're going to get a move up soon we're going to get a correction upwards do i think we're going to continue to make new highs maybe not even this year no i don't for chain link i think uh we're just going to see some consolidation sideways here pretty much exactly like what you see here. So I could be wrong, it's whatever. Uh, you know, at this point, I'm only trading projects that I'm happy with um, buying and holding. So if I enter a trade at a good price, I think is a fair price going forward into next year, and the trade doesn't go my way, then uh, I'm just gonna buy and hold whatever it is that I'm trading. So here we go. I'm planning to sell at 12 if everything works out as favored. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure you see the similarities here. There's not much else to talk about. I mean, this pattern is pretty obvious, right? Um, kind of in your face. All right, we'll see how it works out. Next up, I just wanted to talk about this article and multiple news feeds. We're talking about how the California governor has signed an executive order that's going to ban gas and diesel cars by the year 2035. I thought this was very interesting because I believe this is the direction that the entire world is going, and I'm gonna show you why. But anyway, California Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order on Monday that aims to ban the sale of new internal combustion engine cars in the state by 2035. Rolling down, pull away from the gas pumps, Newsom said. Let us no longer be victims of geopolitical dictators that manipulate global supply chains and global markets. Um, it's funny that he says that because it's making it sound as though we are indeed victims to other countries around the world. Um, but reality is uh, the United States is the, the one benefiting from oil. So that's why I think all of this plays into one big picture of a financial reset a new financial system that is going to move away from the petrodollar and into some form of digital currency, digital asset, gold standard type of platform. 
So for the longest time, which I'm about to get into more detail, since we came off the gold standard, we've been on the petrodollar, which has allowed the United States to profit from this. All right. So we're not victims of geopolitical dictators mani manipulating the oil supply chain. We're not. The uh, United States is benefiting from that. All right. That's why the country is so wealthy at this point. All right. But anyway, during the company's Battery Day event in Fremont, California, on Tuesday, Tesla CEO Elon Musk estimated that it would take about 15 years of all electric sales to eliminate most internal combustion engine cars from the road. 15 countries, including the UK, have instituted similar policies. Nine states, including New York, currently follow California's ZEV standards. I'm not sure what those are, but anyway, you get the picture. Elon Musk is saying it's going to take 15 years, uh, so... Uh, 2035 is the estimate from Elon Musk, the governor of California, shooting for the same time frame. Um, you know, the writing's on the wall, guys. We're moving away from the petrodollar. We're moving away from oil. Um, but let's revisit what the petrodollar is. So, history of the petrodollar system. The origins of the petrodollar system go back to the Bretton Woods Agreement, which replaced the gold standard with the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency. Under the agreement... The U.S. dollar was pegged to gold, while other global currencies were pegged to the U.S. dollar. But because of massive stagflation, or really what they mean is the inability to continue to print as much money as they want, and also a lack of trust is what really happened. Um, you know, countries didn't trust what gold supply we were saying we actually had, or other countries around the world, so everyone moved off. That's what really happened. It wasn't stagflation. But anyway... President Nixon announced in 1971 that the greenback would no longer be exchanged for gold to boost economic growth for the U.S. What happened was, is that led to the creation of the petrodollar system, where the U.S. and Saudi Arabia agreed to set oil prices in U.S. dollars. Not going to read the whole article. Thought it was great to highlight the key takeaways, though. So petrodollars are U.S. dollars paid to an oil exporting country for the sale of oil, or simply an exchange of oil for U.S. dollars. Petrodollars are the primary source of revenue for many OPEC members and other oil exporters. Because they are denominated in U.S. dollars, the purchasing power of the petrodollar relies on the value of the U.S. dollar. When the greenback falls, petrodollars do too. Interesting thing to note, uh, this article, oh, it says it was updated in July 30th. I'm not sure when it actually came out. But anyway, for those of you that don't know, or some of you may, um, the petrodollar got wrecked, uh, you know, here in March when, when this crisis happened. It went all the way to zero. I think it went to something like negative $37 for futures, actually. But you can see this massive candle down, um, you know, the... Mm -hmm. Chart looks like shit, in, in my honest opinion, too. It's failing to get above these resistance lines. Obviously, it recovered from the negative price values that it did have. Uh, but it's bouncing up against these, uh, sorry, not resistance line, but uh, the moving averages. And it, to me, it looks like it's going to continue downward. Um, and you can see that reflected in the price of gas, at least here in the United States. You know, it's not going up anytime soon. At least it doesn't look like it. But anyway, in yeah, my opinion... All right, we're moving away from oil. It's becoming obvious, all right? It's going to eventually get outlawed, in my opinion. Um, you know, you've already seen the dump in the charts. Uh, but I think we are moving to this time where data is obviously the new oil. Um, you know, this is an article by the World Economic Forum. They said, data is the oil of the digital world. What if tech giants had to buy it from us? I just wanted to briefly mention this because this is what Elastos is trying to do. Uh, but it realizes it can't do it on the internet that exists right now. You have to recreate the internet as it exists, or as it is. So, a couple things to highlight. In 2017, the, ec the Economist published a widely referenced article claiming that oil had been replaced the, as the world's most valuable resource by data. Specifically, data captured from users by tech companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon. Uh, monoliths have so much data at their fingertips that they can spot and undermine a potential competitor at, at the earliest possible stage. 
before it poses a credible threat or is known by more than a handful of people. For the past few decades, we have not had any satisfactory option but to hand over our data to tech companies, short of removing ourselves from online interconnection entirely. Data cannot simply exist without having somewhere to exist. Since the advent of the internet, the only place for data to really live has been in the centralized servers of tech companies. That has also meant, however, that the value and economic potential of that data has been largely restricted to those players. So all the big tech companies are the only ones in the world benefiting from this data. Um, I think we're going to see eventually that get uh, blown up and basically distributed elsewhere. We'll see how it all unfolds. Uh, but I talked about this in my last video about Elastos, which I'll go ahead and put in the upper right hand corner for you here to watch if you haven't seen it talking about how Elastos is trying to bring data back into the ownership of the user. But anyway, moving away from oil, uh, trying to pull data away from the big companies and so on, uh, but just a couple more things to note as to why I do think that this is happening. Uh, the United Nations has this thing called Sustainable Development Goals. So let's go through and just read all the goals again, as I've shown before. But anyway, goal number one, no poverty. Goal two, zero hungry hunger. Goal three, good health and well-being. Goal four, quality education. Goal five, gender equality. Goal six, clean water and sanitation. Seven, affordable and clean energy. Eight, decent work and economic growth. Nine, industry innovation and infrastructure. Ten, reduced inequalities. Eleven, sustainable cities and communities. Twelve, responsible consumption and production. Thirteen, climate action. 14, below water, 15, life on land, 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, 17, partnerships. So all the world leaders are working together behind the scenes, supposedly, to execute all of these goals right now. But the one that stuck out to me, obviously, to, in relation to what I'm talking about today is goal 13, climate action. So let's take a look at that one. All right, first and foremost, let's watch this video. Hopefully, I don't get some copyright issues from it. But All right, so they talk about how uh, carbon dioxide levels show no signs of stopping. Uh, and th this is United Nations as well. Okay, so we're pushing towards uh, sustainability development goals and uh, a move to green and climate change needs to uh, be under control and so on. All right, so what are the bullet points? Green transition. Investments must accelerate the decarbonization of all aspects of our economy. Green jobs and sustainable and inclusive growth. Green economy, making societies and people more resilient through a transition that is fair to all and leaves no one behind. Invest in sustainable solutions. Fossil fuel sub subsidies must end and polluters must pay for their pollution. Confront all climate risks. Cooperation, no country can succeed alone. Obviously, the biggest one there to me, confront all climate risks. Okay, oil is supposedly a climate risk. That's the, the narrative. Um, I'm not saying it is or isn't. I'm just saying, uh, you know, this is the idea that's being pushed. And I think it definitely falls under something as all climate risks. So moving away from oil, undoubtedly, in my opinion, um, you know, I think there's going to be a push to try and get data back into the P 
people's hands as well. Uh, we'll see how all this plays out. And last but not least, um, Chainlink is going to $12 in my opinion. And that's whenever I will close my position. Somewhere around there. All right. That covers it. As always, please like and subscribe. Share with your friends and family. And stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. What is a cashless society? What does it actually mean in a literal or high level sense? Money will become like these, relics of a different age. And will only be found in places like this. In other words, hard cash will disappear. It will become electronic, transferred by things like these. Then Tracy is in Beijing to show us what a nearly cashless society actually looks like. Ben, good morning. Mobile payment transactions in China reached a cumulative total of 277.4 trillion RMB in 2018, ranking number one in the world, according to the recently released statistical report on internet development in China. As of June 2019, online payment users in the country reached 633 million. The cashless society is now approaching. When's the last time you paid with cash? Well, chances are cash has taken a backseat to the plastic in your wallet and smartphone pay apps. Denver 7's Ryan Luby explains the digital pay revolution and why not everyone is on board. The cashless society, the cashless society, the cashless society, the cashless society is now approaching. The cashless society.